Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. If you've seen more of my videos, you're probably aware that I really like the music of Alan Holdsworth. So I thought it would be an interesting experiment to try and take a song that's a little bit closer to the kind of music that I play. So in this case, I took a jazz standard and uh, then try and transfer some of the voicings that I find in his music to that standard to get an idea about how it would sound if he was to play through that chord progression. When Alan Holdsworth is playing com his own compositions, he's using a lot of different types of chord voicings. So there's going to be drop twos, drop threes, and some more close voiced uh, chord voicings. But uh, what I chose to focus on in this exercise is to work on the kind of four note voicings that are spread out over several octaves, because that's something that he does quite often, and I find that a very interesting sound to explore. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about chord voicings, adding extensions and alterations, and improvising over chord progressions, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The first thing I want to do is just to play through the chord voicings that I've written out on this exercise of Days of Wine and Roses, so you have an idea about what it sounds like. check out some more exercises that are going to make it easier for you to play through the voicings that I've written out for this song, you should check out the video that I did on drop 2 and 4 voicings, because a lot of these voicings are actually, if not directly drop 2 and 4 voicings, then at least derived from them. The first voicing we have is this F major 7 voicing, and uh, what we have here is, this is again like spread out between A and then a high E, an octave higher, and we have a 9 and we have the root in there. Uh, the way I sort of see this voicing is actually as an inversion of this voicing that you probably already know. Because if you start inverting that, then you get this voicing. And that can be played like this as well. The next voicing is this one, which is the E flat 7. So this is an E flat 7 with a flat 5. And in fact, this is just an E flat 7 uh, drop 3 voicing with a flat 5. So if we take this voicing and then start inverting it, then we will get this one, which is... And that's in fact this one out of lower. Then we get the A half diminished voicing. So here I'm coloring the A half diminished so a bit more uh, closer to how you would maybe think that Alan Holdsworth might do that, because normally if you have an A half diminished voicing for... This is just a drop two and four voicing. And that would be this voicing without the 9, but I added the 9 in there, so I took the root and then put in a 9 instead, and then I have this one. You could also uh, see this voicing as being an uh, E-flat major 7 sharp 5. Then we get the D7 altered. So that's again also just a drop 2, drop 4 voicing. And what happens here is if we take the D7 drop 2, drop 4, like this, and then instead of the instead of the fifth, we have a flat thirteen, and instead of the root, we have a flat nine. Then we have this one, and this moves really nicely down to this G minor seven voicing with a nine. Of course, G minor seven with a nine is the same as a B flat major seven. So in fact, this is just a B flat major seven, top two, top four voicing, and then, and then we get this G minor seven voicing. And this is again just a B flat major seven. Um, what's kind of interesting here is that we can actually voice lead 
this drop two drop four voicing to this one and it sounds kind of okay um, and this one is in fact again like a drop three inversion of a b flat major seven then we go to this voicing so this one is a very typical uh, holster thing to do because we have sort of the sets of fifths he does that quite a lot in different uh, different songs and uh, in this case it's a b flat minor seven and in fact this is just a d flat major seven drop two and four voicing then we move to e flat seven and this one I, when i move this to e flat seven i'm actually just voice leading uh, the whole thing so so two voices stay the same and then the 13 is moved down to a flat five and of course the seventh is going down to the third of the dominant so we get this one and this is an e flat seven with a flat five then we move on to this a minor seven voicing and this is a little bit turned around because normally when we have uh, these types of voicings then uh, most of the sort of the basic part of the color of the chord which would be like the in this case the third and the seventh are found uh, in the middle or in the lower part of the voicing but here we actually put them in the higher part and then i have a fifth and an 11 here but because we have sort of this this stack of fourths up here then that still works then we move to d minor and here now i'm spreading it out so now i have the seventh on top and the third as the lowest voice and then i have the root and the nine in the middle and then we get this g minor seven voicing again which is again just the b flat drop three that i'm playing like this i think the reason why i'm playing it like this is actually just because it sounds better at least on my guitar if i kind of stay with the melody on the same high string here and then we get this c7 voicing this is essentially just a c7 with a 13 drop two drop four so if we start with just the c7 drop two drop four that would be this and then the fifth is just exchanged with a 13 and then we get a few faster moving progressions and uh, we start with the e half diminished a7 so this is just an e half diminished voicing in drop two drop four then we for the a7 i'm actually using the same voicing as i used for the e flat seven in the beginning because e flat seven flat five and a seven flat five are the same notes and then i move to a d minor seven that's just uh, again just using the f major seven drop two drop four voicing for a d minor and then a basic g7 with a nine also drop two drop four and then we get this for g minor seven so this is a g minor seven with an 11 and of course you could see that as being um, derived from a drop two drop four you can also see it as just an open voice triad b flat major triad with an added nine on top here which then gives us the 11 over the g minor and from here i move to this c7 voicing which is again also just a drop two drop four but now with a flat nine and a flat five and this because i have sort of the fifths moving up here so in the in the g minor i get it. and then i take that one step further uh, for the for the half of the song so on the f major i'm going to this one which is an f6 with a nine and this is just purely constructed because i wanted to take this sort of movement further with the parallel fifths because this isn't counterpoint and from here i get to this e flat seven which is a drop two drop four voicing and it's a with a flat five and uh, we can take that to this a minor seven flat five with a nine so again using the nine as a color here and uh, then we can take that to this which is a drop two drop four voicing for a d7 with a flat 13 then these g minor voicings are the same as the first time around and then we get this voicing again and this is the same as what i used on the 
the F major 7 in the beginning. And you can use that as a D flat, sort of a D flat major 7 voicing. So we kind of use it here with a B flat in the bass that becomes a B flat with an added 11, B flat minor with an added 11 and a 9. I don't have a 7 in there, but I think in the context that's not so important. Actually, if you play the melody, then this fits better than having a 7 in there because the major 7 is in the melody. And this is also quite typical for a lot of the Horsworth uh, harmonizations that they, he doesn't always have complete chords all the time. So, and um, then we move to this voicing, which is sort of coming out of this one actually, but but then changed a little bit, and uh, that's an E flat seven with a sharp eleven and a thirteen. And then we get the A minor, which is basically just the A minor version of the G minor that we had in bar, uh, where was that, bar 15. And then we get this voicing. So this is kind of nice. This is also kind of typical for, for a Holzwell thing. I think when he plays it, he probably plays it like this. But uh, I tend to like to play it like this. And what that is, is like a stack of fifth and then the major 7 on top here for an F, so uh, F major 7 played as a stack of fifths, so F, C and G and then with an E on top and this works really well in this context as a D minor 11 with a 9. Uh, then we get a B half diminished and that's this voicing and then I move to a B flat 7 with a sharp 11 and here I chose to do this one. So this is actually an incomplete voicing because I don't have a D in there, which would be the third of the chord. But um, we still have the sharp 11, fifth, 13, and the seventh. And especially the seventh is important for the progression. And then the last four bars, which is just a three, six, two, five first. So um, I have an A minor. And here I chose to make it an A minor nine, even though in the key that wouldn't be sort of the first choice. So that's this voicing, and then again using this voicing for the D minor seven, this one for the C seven, uh, sorry for the G minor seven, and this voicing for C seven, which is a C seven altered, which in this case means that it's a C seven with a flat five and a sharp nine, and then I resolved, I reharmonized the last two bars. Uh, in a very common way because I go instead of going to F at the end I go to a D flat and then to a G flat to go back to F and the way I harmonized that one was to use this for the for the D flat voicing and then this one for the G flat also because if I have this voicing for G flat then I can just move it down and then I'm back at the top if I want to play through several choruses of the exercise. Since I consider this mostly to be an exercise in using certain voicings, I didn't really add any rhythms to the way I'm playing them. And of course you could uh, maybe interpret that more freely and go... And that's up to you to do that. You can easily do that uh, once you start working on it. I think in the beginning just work on getting used to the sound of these voicing, voicings and I also think for me when I try and when I hear these uh, a lot of what I like about it is actually that there are sustained voicings and I, I find that that's also what uh, Holsworth is doing with them when he's using them in his compositions so that makes a lot of sense and of course if you do this it's a little bit it doesn't really matter kind of what kind of voicing you're using almost or at least it gets less important so for the in the beginning just to play it like sustained voicings like I'm doing in the exercise is probably the best way to approach it. Uh, as I already mentioned if you want to check out some more stuff on using these type of voicings and also uh, maybe in a more systematic way check out some of the voicings that this is coming from then check out my video on the drop 2 and 4 voicings because there I go over how that works and how you can use them. If you want to check out more videos on jazz guitar and learn something about improvising with different kinds of scales and arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel.
I publish a new lesson every Thursday and I've been doing this for quite some time. So there's already a lot of stuff available on my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos like this one, then check out my Patreon page. I have a small community of people supporting me on Patreon and they make it possible for me to continue making all these videos. And if you're supporting me on Patreon, I can also give you something in return. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.